Hi, Dennis Weiss for Eagle Communications. Welcome to Why Like Ike. This is a brand new experience for me because we're talking about a piece of Eisenhower that I know very little. Football, evidently, is the topic of the day, Jeff Nelson. Yes, it is. Uh, today we're going to talk uh, about Ike and his relationship with uh, the great American game of football. And if you get too far out of line as the expert, we have Troy Elkins here to whack you with the microphone. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. I just wanted to establish for the camera what roles we're playing here today. <laughs> so you're supposed to know about Eisenhower and football, and I'm supposed to in enjoy the time I spend listening to you. And Troy's here to whack you with the microphone if you don't perform. That's, that's very true. All right. Although Troy does have a few good stories about Eisenhower. Okay. So... And you brought stuff, so I'm guessing this may be this A for Abilene in the little program here. Kind of starts us off with Eisenhower and football. Well, close. Um, Eisenhower was, was uh, always very interested in sports. Grew up in Abilene. Uh, the small program we have here is a uh, program uh, from the 1910 uh, football, uh, Abilene High School football team annual banquet. Uh, they uh, had a Toastmaster, and uh, they had uh, several students. R.B. Um, Downs, anybody know R.B. Downs? Uh, several students would, would uh, perform. Uh, That's the Toastmaster, R.B. Downs. R.B. Downs is the Toastmaster. Um, uh, several performers into the dinner, uh, a, a person that we now know as President Eisenhower performed a song called Kicks. Kicks, I see that. Um, so. Oren Snyder, now that is an Abilene area name right there. Somebody will know who Oren Snyder is. Oren Snyder is an Abilene name. We actually have a few uh, items in the collection, uh, postcards that Dwight wrote to Oren. Oh, really? So they remained, remained friendly after okay. high school. The A, uh, even though it might represent Abilene, um, is actually from the United States Military Academy at West Point. You suckered so me into that one, didn't represents you? Represents Army. Um, yes. Okay. After, after starring uh, on the football and baseball teams at, at Abilene High School, uh, Dwight Eisenhower went to uh, the U.S. Military Academy at West Point uh, in 1911 and played football there as well. Played, he played football there uh, a couple of seasons. He actually, when he first showed up, he was so tall and skinny that he was put on the junior varsity team. Okay. And by his second year there, he was bulked up. He's 5'11", about 175 pounds. So he started playing linebacker and running back and was, was successful until he uh, tweaked his knee pretty bad. Hurt it pretty badly, didn't he? It would affect his career, for the, his, yeah. his Army career. It was to the point, by the time he graduated, graduated West Point, there was... Uh, a issue as to whether or not he could be of service to the Army without mm -hmm. being a burden. And they came to the decision, as long as you do, don't put cavalry down on your request sheet, we won't process you out. So mm -hmm. for you get to pick your first three slots you want. He put infantry for all three slots. So you don't need knees to march, but you need them to ride a horse for some reason. Uh, so. I would beg to differ with that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Oh. We, we have football to thank for his bad knee. We have three or four people on the medical examiner's board at the time who made a very wise choice to let Dwight David Eisenhower continue on in the military. Yeah, yes, they did. And, um, you know, it was just one of those things that he was wanting to stay. And as they offered him coast ar artillery, and he didn't want that, so he ended up in the infantry. Uh, even with the injury, though, his love of football didn't stop. He, uh, instead of being able to play, he started coaching the junior varsity team. Oh, I didn't know that. Very and cool. And instead of, well, there was an officer, a, a regular Army officer that was the head coach, and he basically stepped out of the way and let Eisenhower coach the team, when, and it turned out to be quite successful, moving several of the underrated players. He got them conditioned and trained enough that they started making the first first squad, uh, the varsity football team. So editorialization here from the Eagle guy, the, um, one of the best examples of the proof of leadership is the ability to see things in others. Uh, and that's 
way I read what you just said. Yeah. So when you can find talent where other people aren't looking, you've got a better eye. And that better eye carried over to once he got, uh, once he was actually sworn in as an officer, given his first duty station at Fort Sam Houston, he uh, was there a very short period and the Peacock Military Academy in San Antonio uh, approached him to be the head football coach. And he basically said, no, I'm, I'm a junior officer. I've got too much to do. I, I, I could not provide you the time. They even offered him $150 for the season to coach, <laughs> which was an astronomical amount at that. And I'm sure he yeah. could have used that $150. He, yes, he could definitely have used that $150. Um, so he, he was married by then? No, he was not married at this point. Okay. He had, he had met Mamie. He had not been married at, to her at this point. Okay. Uh, when, when he turned them down, a few weeks later, he was in the officer's club. And the commanding general walks in. Uh, people in this area might recognize the name General Funston. Mm -hmm. and Camp Funston from over Camp Funston. Fort Riley. Uh, quite possibly would have been the ahead of General Pershing in commanding uh, the U.S. forces in World War One if he hadn't died prior to. Walks into the officers' uh, club and says, "Where's Mr. Eisenhower?" And the very young Lieutenant Eisenhower stepped up. General Funston offers, it's like, let me buy you a drink, and proceeds to tell him why he should take the coaching job at Peacock Military Academy and that it'd be good for the Army and it would be good for training these young boys who are in a military school. Hmm. So, of course, I took it, and Peacock Military Academy had a very successful season. Uh, the next year, they go and hire them a coach that had graduated from uh, my nemesis, the University of Texas, and Ike instead took a job at St. Louis College, which is now known as St. Mary's College okay. in San Antonio, and coached them to a 5-1-1 one, and one season. Previously, they had been beaten by scores, the prior, mm -hmm. year prior, they'd been beaten by scores like 50-0, to 80-0, zero, to zero, and he walked in and turned them around to a winning program as well. So, are you going to tell me why? Basically, it just came down to he knew the fundamentals of football. Uh, like you said, he could recognize talent in people, and he knew how to coach in such a manner that the, the students would respond to him and actually play the way he wanted them to play and succeed. That, it's not a surprise to me. I didn't, these are facts I did not know. It is not a surprise to me. Leadership carries across different skill platforms. It just does. What do you think, Mr. Nelson? Uh, I would agree. Uh, the thing I found interesting about uh, the, the, the football-related artifacts in our collection are that it shows a side of Ike that's not normally seen. Uh, I would agree. President Eisenhower is, is you know, famed for being one of America's finest generals and, and famed for being the president, the, the football-related re artifacts that we do have show that, that he had a human side as well. Football does train in leadership, but football is also a game, and it's a fun game. Um, one of these artifacts here, if I can pick it up, is a ticket to the Army-Navy football game. One of the what year? Most famous college football games Still today. In American history is yeah. the Army-Navy game. Uh, this was 1926. 26. And the game was played in Chicago at Soldier Field. Now what people may not know is this was the first football game played at Soldier Field. Because before the Army-Navy game in 1926, it was not called Soldier Field. It was rededicated in 1926 as a World War I memorial field. Oh, really? So that Army-Navy game was the very first ever football game played in the rededicated stadium and then kind of as a for, for the football fans out there that game in 1926 was the de facto national championship game so do you know the Abilene young man who plays on Soldier Field today uh, I believe his last name would be Mr. Whitehair yes, yes. number 65 Cody Whitehair and he went to Kansas State um, <laughs> oh, I feel a plug coming uh, so for the, the Wildcats. Uh, the the Army-Navy game in 26 was de facto national championship. The Navy went into the game undefeated. The okay. Army went into the game 
at seven and one. Oh. Dwight Eisenhower may have used this ticket. If he did, he probably was not too happy. Mm. The game ended in a tie. It was called Due to Darkness. And because of the fact that it ended in a tie, Navy got the oh. national championship because they had the better record. So part of my job is, is to take what we would love to just have a conversation about and, and try to make sure people understand why we do, why I like Ike. There's a lot of people out there who may not be interested in, in that broom handle, that MG42, that M1 Garand, or the history of Chosun Reservoir. However, we're pretty well certain in today's world there's a lot of folks interested in football, interested in sports, and we want them to know with why like Ike, that he was a complete person and he had interests just like you. Football was a very passionate interest for him. Not only was he passionate about it, he was successful in it as a player. And I've learned today he was successful in it as a coach. Football also proves that Ike had a bit of a sense of humor. Okay, I like a sense of humor. One of, of my humor. favorite artifacts is this letter. And, uh, uh, Taped to the letter is a piece of wood. A piece of wood says Cornell 54, Columbia 0. Oh. It's a letter from 1949. Uh, so World War II was over. Uh, General Eisenhower was uh, president of Columbia, Columbia University at the time. Columbia, the zero side of that score. The, the letter was written to him by a man by the name of William Ash. William Ash was a veteran attending the University of, at Cornell. Uh, on the GI Bill scholarship. Okay. He was enlisted during World War II, in all likelihood had never even met Dwight Eisenhower, mm -hmm. but felt comfortable enough communicating <laughs> with his formal supreme commander to write, Dear President Eisenhower, I am not being sarcastic in any way when I send you this token of Cornell's 54 to zero victory over Columbia, a piece of the Gulf Post. Better luck next time. Sincerely <laughs> yours. Uh, was, so what's the follow-up? Well, even before he was president, Eisenhower was very good at answering okay. correspondence. November 3rd, 1949, just uh, three days after he received this. Prompt. Dear Mr. Ash, thank you for the splinter with the score of the game emblazoned on it. Your memento is the emotional equivalent of a blow on the head with the entire <laughs> goalpost. Sincerely, Dwight David Eisenhower. That's funny. Uh, that and, is funny. And they did briefly keep up correspondence the following year. Apparently, Columbia was not happy about the embarrassing loss. They beat Cornell, and Mr. Ash wrote oh, really? Eisenhower a second letter saying, if you recall, I sent you mm -hmm. a piece of the goalpost last year. Unfortunately, this year I cannot send you any mementos. And Eisenhower sent back and said, you're right. <laughs> you That's can't good. send us anything this year. That is funny. Yeah. So it, 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 it shows that, that Despite his fame as a general and as president, he was approachable to mm -hmm. everybody. People really, truly loved him just for the kind of person he was. You know, we have a vast uh, treasure of photographs of Eisenhower here at the library, and I'm always amazed at the warmth of his smile. Uh, some people don't photograph well, I'm one of them, <laughs> but Eisenhower is the o complete opposite of that. But his, when he is smiling, his warmth comes through those old black and white photos just like a, a beam of light. It's amazing quality. Yep. Blessed by having it. So I can football. Uh, we've established the common man. We kind of knew that with him growing up in Abilene, right. Kansas. Wouldn't we have liked to have been able to see that? Well, we can't because you can't live two lifetimes, but we can come here and we can look within the archives of the things that Eisenhower's left us. Other people have sent like this football from Michigan State. And we can experience the life of Dwight David Eisenhower through the artifacts. Yes. So what's the football about? The, the, the uh, Michigan State football um, is a, a football signed by the 1952 Michigan State football team. Okay, 52. It, it came uh, to Eisenhower during his campaign for president okay. uh, the first time. Uh, there's all, <clears throat> also a smaller football from the Michigan State Re uh, Young Republicans Club. Oh, really? That, that says on it, score a touchdown with Ike. Oh. Uh, so even once he became a political figure, uh, football was still 
uh, a part of his campaigning and a, and, a, and a part of how he, he, he sold himself. Any famous people, football players on there? Have you researched that, Mr. I, I have not had a chance to look at that. I well, don't recognize any of the names offhand. Well, there's one. I don't. Don Cutler, even though Jay's not too famous right at the moment, so that's a name that oh, still that his, exists. His I don't have any idea. <laughs> don't have any idea, but the name's the same. Um, we can presume here. It's television, you know, well, the facts come later. I, I, I'm, I'm sure a Michigan State fan will uh, let us know which of the 1952 okay. team became famous okay. NFL players. Okay, well, I want somebody to make sure <laughs> they check Don Cutler. That's true, Don Cutler. All right. And then the last piece we have, I, I, I kind of pulled it out, it's, it goes to show a, a little bit of, of some of the perks you get as president. Being president, as, as we all know, is can be a very difficult job. I'm going to move that so they can. Um, you have unobstructed path to the camera. In 1962, uh, and, and Eisenhower would have been, been a past president by this point, uh, he received a pass, an official league pass, from the American Football League. This would have been before okay, the NFL sure, combined. Sure. So the AFL was its own league. Extends the courtesy of its parks to Dwight Eisenhower and party. Exchange at box office for reserve seats. So he could have gone to any... The golden ticket, proverbial and reality. Yes. Uh, he could have gone to any AFL football game in, in the 1962 season, him and Party. And I do love that it doesn't define how big Party is. Yes. He could have brought Mamie. He could have brought all the grandkids. There you go. Either way, he would have gotten uh, some nice reserve seats. That, that's a... Uh, you think back, if you're a football fan, you think back to the AFL. Right. Um, that was that has some historical interest to people. Uh, he Ike's time as president in the fifties was, was kind of an interesting time in American sports because it was very different than how we see modern sports. Mm -hmm. um, American football was popular, but there were two main leagues. Uh, baseball was was the most popular at the time. Right. Uh, and most presidents are known for baseball. Uh, Eisenhower threw out one uh, opening pitch uh, that we know of, um, but he was not as into baseball as other presidents. He was more of a football president. Okay, um, kind of makes sense. Probably if you're interested in what you're interested between in. Between President his, Eisenhower and President Ford, those are the two biggest football fan presidents that we've Ford had. was a Michigan guy. Yeah, know? he was a Michigan. He would have hated that. Yeah, he would have hated Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, as we progress towards uh, the end of our program today about Eisenhower and football, really about Eisenhower and the common man, and we use football to talk about it, right? So uh, as we look at football ar uh, archive material here, I'm always trying to figure out how to message to young people the opportunity of benefit that they have by living in the community that Dwight David Eisenhower grew up in. And it's access to this facility. It's access to these stories. It's access to the example of who Dwight David Eisenhower was. And it's a simple fact that there is nothing standing between you and the same path to history. Nothing. It's a choice. I get a big kick out of saying that. Well, uh, I, I, I believe we would agree with that. Uh, he started in Abilene, Kansas, uh, went to the military academy at West Point, uh, had a, a, a long and very successful military career, then had a very successful political career. And you might say that a, a young man who just excelled at sports and liked to have fun in Abilene succeeded in all this. And even Ike, came to think that it might be in part because of his participation in sports. Later in life, after he retired as president, uh, he had a chance to speak to some West Point football players before their Army-Navy game. Okay. And he said, quote, I believe that football, perhaps more than any other sport, tends to instill in men the feeling that victory comes through hard, almost slavish work, team play, self-confidence, and an enthusiasm that amounts to dedication. He came to believe that, that his playing of football and his coaching of football showed him insights into to how men are trained to do their duty and to believe and work as a team. So um, 
I'm venturing into the deeper waters that exist just offshore from the safe places here. So as football is not uh, the most popular sport in America today when it comes to thinking about young people, uh, we think of it as, as a dangerous sport. I guess st sitting here in the Eisenhower Presidential Library and Museum, I want to, to simply say that there are other things in the world that are far more dangerous than the sport of football. And if Dwight David Eisenhower is willing to go on the record and say that football is a great training ground for young men about to face the rigors of the world, and we know what the rigors of Dwight David Eisenhower's world were, that's good enough for me. I think it's a great opportunity to say that the world can be a, a stressful, hard place to learn to excel in. And Dwight David Eisenhower thought football was a great way of doing that for young people. We're not going to argue with him, are we? I try not to argue with the president's <laughs> words, if at all possible. Okay. All right. I'm pretty sure we're out of time. It's been fun. I've learned some things. The great stories, Troy. I appreciate you bringing that. Pers the personal story of Dwight David Eisenhower always makes my eyes light up. I've had fun today. You? Yes. Okay. All right, we appreciate the opportunity to bring Why Like Ike into your living room or business or other places. You go around on your little smartphone, you can watch it too. I'm Dennis Sweet, I work for Eagle Communication. These fine gentlemen, Mr. Jeff Nelson and Troy Elkins, work for the Eisenhower Presidential Library. We're wishing you a great day. <laughs>